What's going on, Internet? Iron Jordan here. I know it's been a couple of weeks since we talked, and I had a big spiel during that week of, you know, hey, we're going to have a lot of content coming out. We're going to have a lot of Digimon and DBS-focused uh, content coming out. And I did not quite deliver on that. So I'm here about two weeks later to apologize and then to also make good on my promise, but maybe just a little late. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a DBS deck tag. This is something that I have been working on for an entire set because Goatines came out in set 10. This is my revamped version of Yellow Goatines, of which I am calling Yellow Good Stuff. I'm just really hoping that this is the version that works because the deck feels fine the way that I have it right now. It feels pretty good. The leader is good. It just doesn't feel insane. It feels very fair. And I'm hoping that just getting more good stuff to go in this deck will just push it over the edge a little bit and make it just the quintessential, you know, Jund deck of the format. Now, I'm not saying that I'm creating a tier 1 meta deck here, but I do think that Goatines is an incredibly powerful leader with incredibly powerful support engine and has the potential to be tier 1. And in fact, he was topping a little bit when set 10 first came out, but we're pretty far removed from that as we're in DB6 meta and we're about to be in the expansion set meta, so we are a little bit removed, but... We're just going to go ahead and jump into it. We know what Goatines does at this, you know, time. If you've played DBS at all, you have seen this leader at your locals. You've seen it on Untap. You've seen it on Octagon, whatever. This leader is just good. Uh, he draws cards for your opponent playing extra cards, which most people are going to do. There are very few decks in the game that are not going to play extra cards. I mean, even when Reboot Gohan goes to defeat Kamehameha you, at least you get to draw a card and on the back side you get to tap something down if he has anything up so he's just an inherently good leader he self awakens has tons of card advantage and he untaps too which is always important now let's move on to what's new with the deck the first card that we're going to look at is this bergamo giant force this is my favorite card out of draft box six this and a napa that we'll talk about in a future video that i've actually already recorded so be ready for that uh, so Bergamo Giant Force, it is a one specified yellow for a 5,000 power unison permanent. This card gets plus 3,000 power for each marker on it. That means that as soon as you play this card with one marker on it, it'll be an 8k power unison. Auto, once per turn. When your opponent attacks this card, add a marker to this card. So if you go first and you play this card, it's an 8k. You take it up to two, it's now an 11k. Then if your opponent attacks again, it's a 14k, which means that they're going to have to dump resource. Unless their leader is one of those leaders that gains plus 5k on the front, which some leaders do, like uh, Vanilla Coup, Vanilla Hit does, the reboot hit. So some leaders do gain 5k on the front, so you do need to be cognizant and aware of that. But for the most part, your opponent is either going to leave this thing alone or they're going to have to commit resources to hitting this thing, which some opponents might be okay with that, but... You know, either way, they're still only removing one counter from it. So the plus one isn't even a plus one. It's a plus zero that essentially is a plus one. It just says add a marker to this card. Okay, cool, whatever. The neg two is activate main, play up to one skillless battle card or universe nine card with an energy cost of two or less from your deck in rest mode, then shuffle your deck. We only have one target for that in this deck, and that is this Basil. But the whole reason why we're playing the Bergamo, and, and it's this is just for me, guys. So the whole reason why we're playing the Bergamo Unison in the first place is because it is a annoying Unison. It's almost the yellow version of Baby. So if you've played against Blue Baby, the Blue Baby Unison, like Soul Striker has access to, the biggest problem with that card is that it's so annoying to get rid of. You don't want to... It has five loyalty straight from the... Five markers i'm sorry i'm a magic player it has five markers straight from the start so you're getting trunks no matter what all the time and it's just not worth it to try to kill the thing most of the time bergamo is a little less annoying in that he is essentially going to be have he's essentially going to have three markers on him whenever you pass turn so if your opponent really wants to dump resources into him they can simply attack him with for example if you're playing against reboot hit they can just attack him with the leader he'll be 15k and then they can play like a double strike kaba or a double strike vegeta or whatever and then they can just kill him and he'll just die and, and that is what it is but 
again, it's something your opponent has to dedicate resources to. This thing, if it's left alone, can just get big and it just can sit on the field forever. And it has the added potential of just getting huge over the course of the game. I mean, by turn five, you're talking about this thing hitting in the 20, almost 30k power range, uh, if I if my math is correct. But it, it is just a good unison, and in my opinion, it is currently the best generic yellow unison in the game, specifically for its cost. Next, we're going to move on to Tyrannical Blow. Ty Tyrannical Blow. Can't speak tonight. Sorry, guys. This is a one-energy counterplay. This is double bloodlust, essentially. If your leader card is yellow, if the battle card being played has an energy cost of three or less, it's played with its skills negated for the turn. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards or use the cards to negate skills for the turn. So... Obviously, the three or less thing is a little bit of a issue with this, and obviously it doesn't hit deflect, but that doesn't matter. So this thing is very good against all those floodgate cards. So yellow now has probably, in my opinion, the be I'm going to say that a lot tonight, guys, because that's all these videos are, <laughs> is my opinion. But yellow has, in my opinion, the best answer to Topo... Gohan, all these floodgate, you know, stop attackers that are tied to battle cards, right? Uh, I think there's a Vegeta for for baby that does the same thing. It makes you sack an energy when you when you attack. But the other important thing about this is that this is a counterplay. You can counterplay a unison on this and then target something else that you want to have its skills negated for the turn and have it. If your opponent plays a card with deflect, you can still counterplay the deflect card. It won't be affected, but you'll still get the counter uh, effect you'll still get the negate effect on your opponent's unison if you want to. This card has a lot of applications. I, I, I already picked up two playsets from TCG Player. They're pretty cheap right now. They're like less than a dollar. This is um, November the 17th currently, 2020. So if you want to get playsets of this card, I highly suggest you pick up one, two, three, four playsets of this card. Just go ahead and pick it up while it's cheap because this will be a staple meta, meta card for sure. If not in main boards, it's definitely a sideboard card. This card is just, it's finally yellow having access to some kind of bloodlust effect and it being a little limited, but it also being incredibly powerful. We've already kind of touched on this Basil card, but this is just a one drop cantrip that can become a 19k dual attacker if your opponent has five cards tapped total. Now, it's important to note that that just says five or more cards in rest mode. It does not say battle cards, it does not specify unison, energy, whatever. It's everything. Their leader counts, their energy counts, their unisons count, their battle cards count. If your opponent has five total cards tapped, you can have this thing become a 19k beater for one energy that replaces itself. It has unique, which is why we only play two, but I definitely don't think there's any harm in going up to four. It's a zero plus five K. It's a zero plus five K. And so you have no, you're, you're not hurting your deck by playing four of this. I mean, it, unless you draw all four of them at the beginning of the game. And even then it's a cantrip. So the first one's going to replace itself and you can combo it off or whatever, and then play another one. It's like, it's good. So go ahead and play this card at some number. It it actually is relatively cheap. It's the cheapest it's ever been. I think these are like 10 bucks right now. So definitely try to get you some of these if you can. The next card we've got here is uh, Adoptive Father, Son, Gohan. So obviously we're playing the swap, the swap package. We've got four Goten and four Goku. This might not be the correct number of Goku. I've played with three and I've hated it at three. So I wanted I wanted to see it more. So I bumped it up to four. The, uh, the, the swap package is just so cheap and effective and aggressive and it just generates good advantage on offense and defense because like your opponent's going to attack into the goten so if you want to you know save your life you know your opponent like it there's so many good things you can do with just this straightforward good aggressive engine it's just great uh we're playing three planet vegeta which is really nice because we're also playing three bardock might of the resistance and three great eight bardock raiders war cry so Planet Vegeta fetches any Saiyan in our deck that is four or less, so it can uh, it can fetch any of the swap pieces except for Gohan because he's not a uh, he's not Saiyan. It can swap any of our pieces for our Gotenks engine. It can swap either any of our apes. It can go get our counterplay card in the Vegeta. It can go get our super combo if we want it to. This card gets essentially our entire deck. It gets at least seventy percent of it for sure. And on top of that, we have the added benefit of at the end of the turn, you untap your apes. Now, the Great 8 Bardock does not, the, the 4 drop does not have Raider's Warcry, does not have Blocker. However, the Heart of the Resistance does, which is really good because in this deck, you want to play around the Great 8 Bardock's effect. So, this thing's effect is if your leader card is yellow, at the end of the battle when this card is used in a combo from your hand, play this card permanent. You can only play mono yellow Saiyan cards. Now, 
This thing has critical and blocker. Critical 15k is always nice, especially since you're essentially getting it for one energy, which is awesome. Uh, and it has unique, so you can only have one out, but we only play three, so that won't come up very often. And so it, we have to talk about the permanent here for a second because we have a lot of non-yellow Saiyan cards. The Bergamo, you can't play it. The Basil, you cannot play it. You cannot play your adoptive father, son, uh, son Gohan. However, those are the only cards in the deck you can't play because extra cards like our Nimbus, our Planet Vegetas, and our Tyrannical Blows, those are extra cards, and so they are not played, they are activated. There is a slight difference here, and so if I understand that ruling correctly, you can still activate all your extra cards because they are not played, they are activated, so do with those what you will. You you can you just have to play around your unison which hopefully the unison will be out before the bardock so that won't matter too much hopefully you're already into the mid game into the you know mid stages of the game so you're not having to swap so you're not worried about the gohan too much and then the basil is just a two of so we don't really care if we can't play him or not he's just icing on the cake for the most part on top of that the the reason why we play planet vegeta in this deck is not only to search this guy out it's also to get him off the field if we have to and so at you know, if you're on your turn and you have one energy to spare and you go, okay, cool, I'm going to attack, combo this great ape, play him, cool, did you did you combo out, whatever, 15k, crit, he restands, he's on defense now, we can then use him as a blocker to hope that he dies, he goes away, and then next we can play our unisons if we want, our basils if we want, we can play our swap engine then if we want, and so we can get him out of the way really easy, so we're not super worried about the permanent on this Bardock card. Next, we're going to talk about just uh, some, you know, regular, you know, just the, the spine of the deck, just the, you know, just the the good the good meat of the deck. We've got this new card from the expansion boss, which is the Sun Goten and Trunks Super Saiyan Tag Team. This is one of my favorite cards, Chef's Kiss. This is I'm going to say something kind of dumb here, but bear with me. This card is almost as good as Grim Reaper of Justice. Almost. Almost. This card is insane. So I said it when Grim Reaper was first coming out. I said, look, it's the best battle card in the game. And it, and it turns out it is. Uh, that deck just does insane things. And it mostly just goes off the back of Grim Reaper being a sit drop that you play for two, draws two cards, pops something, yada, 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 whatever, right? Dual attack, 25k, all the good stuff, right? This card does for this yellow deck almost as much as Grim Reaper of Justice does for the green Goatings deck. Why is that? Well, I mean, you can read on the screen if your leader card is a yellow Goatings Adolescent, so just this one leader in the game. When this card is discarded by a Union Fusion skill, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and switch it to rest mode. You can't activate the auto skill on copies of this card for the turn. So... This card firstly counts as both Sun Goten and Trunks for your Union Fusion. So you can use both of them if you want. If you have two copies of this card in your hand, you can pitch it off Union Fusion to play the big boy Goatings. Um, you could use it with either the other two, which is probably the preferred method because you only get one tap off this. But this thing ignores barrier. It just ignores barrier for anything. So you pitch it off of the Union Fusion, its triggered ability uh, activates before the Gotenks even enters the battlefield. And so, if your opponent just has a big thing with Barrier, it could have Barrier and Indestructible. It doesn't matter. You choose it, you tap it down, the Gotenks comes down, he blanks its skills in Norin Barrier, and then kills it. That's why I say, like, this yellow deck just got access to probably the best removal in the game, and it's for three energy. And it just kills basically anything that's not a unison. And even then, the Gotenks, we already saw, he's a double strike dual attacker, so he is actually very good at killing unisons. Like, turn three, if you're about to awaken, pay three, get this big beater, tap something down, kill it, then kill a unison while you're attacking, and then you get to awaken, untap two energy, it's like it never happened, basically. <laughs> oh man, I am so happy that this deck got uh, some really, really good support. Like this, this card is nuts, and I might be overreacting just a little bit, but I honestly don't really think that I am. So we'll see as as time goes on. I think that this this card in particular will at least bring this engine into playability, and will slide this deck closer to being meta relevant. So to go along with the uh, Gotenks engine, we have two of the Trunks and two of the Goten from set 11. Uh, these cards are just good because they are names, and you can get them back from the graveyard. So if you have to pitch them off Nimbus, or if your opponent makes you discard cards, you can just get them back. 
it's also really nice to fix your hand. So like if you're in the late game, you're like, oh crap, I need a Goten or I need a Trunks or whatever, and you have it in the graveyard, you just go ahead and pull it back once per turn. So there's that. Next, we have some of our more supporty cards. We've got our super combo here, Counter Blast on Gohan. You could play the Krillin if you want to, but this is a Saiyan, so it's searchable off of uh, Planet Vegeta. And I also like the ability to have removal in this card. So that's why I'm playing this. I think that, that yellow definitely has the best set 10 super combo because it just feels like it does the most, you know. The green one's good too, don't get me wrong, but I think the yellow one just does the most. Then you have uh, Vegeta Prideful Transformation. We're playing four Unisons. We're playing four of this. I was playing three, but I felt like I wasn't seeing it as often. And even though we are playing Planet Vegeta, and so we can just search it out, you don't want your opponent to know that you have it. So that's why I just bumped it up to four, because I just wanted to see it all the time. This card can just straight up save games for a lot of things. Your opponent plays a secret rare that doesn't have Deflect, and you go, okay, cool, rest it. Sweet. Playing against... um. Broly Swap, this card is just a lifesaver. They play something without Deflect, you tap it down, and then you have a blocker. So, super good. Uh, I like this card a lot. like that card a lot. And then I think the final card in our deck is our Secret Rare. Yes, we are still rocking the 8-drop SS3 Goatings. Why? Because flavor. That is it. That is the only reason why we're playing this card. We actually have enough 1-drops now to play the Sin Shinron if we want to in yellow. You can play the Gogeta, the SS4 Gogeta from set 10 if you want to. But I just really like this card. It's a Gotenx. It fits the theme. I'm stubborn and I'm playing it and that is why. Simple as that. <laughs> this card has lost me more games than it's won when I've played it. I don't care. I have a copy of it. I'll hold on to it forever. Gotenx is my favorite character. I'm playing it. You can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to be doing some more playtesting with this deck as the week goes on. I've already played a little bit of it online of this version. I'm waiting to get the final cards that I need. My Tyrannical Blows are not all in yet. My Bergamos are not all in yet. I have half my Bergamos. And then obviously the uh, expansion set card does not come out until a couple of days from now. And so once I get all that stuff in in physical, then I can get some better testing in and let you guys know. As, as you guys probably know, I'm not a hyper competitive player. I used to be. I used to go to like all the regionals that I could, uh, but I would always play off meta decks. I always tried to be the guy that you know took something off meta and and topped with it. And I always got so close. I was always one game away, like one game away. But uh, yeah, I just like to to play this game for fun and and build stuff like this because this this deck seems good. There's no reason why it shouldn't be good. And uh, I guess we'll find out as the weeks goes on uh, how, how good this deck and how good this leader is. Uh, I'm going to stop rambling now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think of the deck. If you have any other suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video.